To continue with our training, now what I am going to talk about is about the components found in this part of the circuit. We still need to explain. This area is an important area. And by the way, they are going to learn several things, also very important in inverter technology. So we are going to clean our tablet. I am going to do a cleaning. And we are going to continue talking about these components, which are filters, low pass, or filters, double PY, or noise filters. And their configuration is as follows. We will be finding a coil in series, another coil in series a capacitor in parallel and another capacitor in parallel and this is the area we are going from to be talking what is this zone what does it mean what does it do what is its function it does not modify the current since we are not in a part that modifies the current what do i mean that on this side we are, with 220 AC. And on this side also, the current does not change. But, what this component does, these four components, is, not allow anything that happens on this side of the line, to affect, the electrical installation of the home, that is, anything that happens here, with the circulation of electrons, any modification that we give, does not pass to this side thanks to this low pass filter. And how does this filter work? To understand, we are going to be talking about how everything that is winding and everything that is capacitors works. But first I am going to show you physically like this they also recognize it. And if they have any platelets and they are observing that they can identify them. Let's observe this plate. In this case here we have two windings in toroidal shapes. It is called like that because of the format they have. And two capacitors are very low capacity capacitors. Here we have the coils, the line input and the neutral input. That is, these are in series and these two are in parallel with the line and the neutral. Well, what is the function they fulfill or how do they work? We had said that capacitors store electrons, then if we had said that capacitors store electrons as if they were a buoy or a ball of water in the path of a pipe, when we talk about coils, precisely we can say that it is the opposite. A coil would be something like this. Let's see if we get the drawing. We are talking about a motor pump. What it will do then is that when water enters in the capacitors, it is stored in this area, and a moment later, it comes out a little late through the other hole. But in the case of the motor pump, when the water is entering here, this motor speeds up the circulation of water. It delays. This advances. And that is the function in electrons of the capacitors and the coils exactly the opposite effect. This delays and this pushes. Then, to pass it clean again, Let's imagine that we have the following circuit of water. If we compare it with water, we have a water storage. And here we have. Now I will try to draw better. There is a motor pump. At this point, even though the water that I entered perhaps has certain 
frequencies, that is, imagine that water enters but is cut off. Enters but it is cut. It enters and it is cut. It enters and it is cut. There are some cuts or fluctuations in the water supply. Thanks to the fact that we have stored a lot of water here. And here we have a pump that will be absorbing and pushing it. On this side we can have a constant supply. Something like this would be a cistern system for example. That is placed in places where we need good pressure of water. And that is constant. In the same way it happens in electricity, when we have many modifications in the flow of electrons, until now we are seeing a board or a conventional source that the oldest inverters had it. Today inverters do not have this type of sources. What do I mean by this? That these are very simple sources, and even so they modify the circulation of electrons quite a bit, so that all this does not affect the line and other household appliances, or so that the much more complex inverter sources do not affect the household appliances. These low-pass filters are placed, which do not allow those, so to speak, high frequencies pass to the other side. That is the function of these low-pass filters. And with what I am explaining to you about how capacitors work and how coils work, we are also getting quite a bit ahead in a topic in inverter that we are going to deepen much more. What is an inverter circuit component that I am going to show you now so that you keep in mind that we are going to deal with a little later? What are the reactors? The reactors in the inverter equipment that you will find are sometimes on the motor side, and sometimes you will also find them mounted on the board. These reactors fulfill a similar function between large capacitors and reactors. They fulfill that function and we will talk about that later. But you already know how coils work when they are in series and you know how capacitors also work. What effects do they produce? in the circulation of electrons. Let's go back to the topic we were mentioning a moment ago. We're going to continue talking about our filter because it has this format. A format like that. How are they going to see now? Because it has this configuration format on the board. It is usually called a double pi filter, precisely because of the Greek letter pi, and because of the shape of that letter. They saw that the Greek letter is like this, and it would look like a double pi, since it is inverted on both sides. So it is called that way double pi filter. But, it is a low pass filter, I really know, that it only allows low frequencies to pass through, but not high frequencies. We are going to write it down here. And it is also called a noise filter. It is the same as you too they are found in washing machines. Many times where electricity enters the washing machines. There they have a component similar to a capacitor and inside that they also have filters. So that what happens with those motors with coals does not affect other household appliances. Now comes the question, how do we test its state? How do we know if it is good or bad? In the case of coils, it's continuity. If I measure with the multimeter, the continuity must be Zero, zero. It must pass electricity directly. In the case of capacitors, the line must be open OL. But what happens in a circuit like this? Keep in mind that if you are going to test these components inside the board, 
And if you give continuity between this and this point, or if you want to measure this and this capacitor, what the multimeter will mark is the resistance of the transformer coil. Keep in mind that if we measure between this and this point, in reality what the multimeter will do is pass the electrons through here and mark the resistance of this primary coil transformer. Keep in mind this detail because it can give us a confusing data, but if we remove the capacitor, the resistance must be OL, it must be an open line. Let's see it on the board. To be able to make the measurements that correspond, we find a coil on this board. We place our multimeter in resistance mode. And then, always scraping a little bit of the varnish, we test and there we have, zero, zero. These are the coils. Now, if we measure the capacitors that are placed at these points, we can move away a little and measure up to here where there is a soldered part without varnish. We have three or four megohms, 25 or less is fine. This is not the result of the capacitor, but rather of the other components that surround it. The important thing is that we do not have zero, zero because we are measuring at the ends of the capacitors, which are the lined and the neutral if we have zero, zero. When we energize the board, there will be a short circuit. One last detail to keep in mind on these filters. Let's look at another board that also has some filters, but only has one coil and one capacitor. If a coil gets damaged, what I can do is to make a bridge, a bridge, to skip that coil. Of course, this is just to test the board. Once we deliver the board to the customer, we have to put it back together, of course. But you can make a bridge and test the board. In the case of capacitors, when I remove them and see that they are damaged, what I do is not leave them installed and test the board without the capacitor. To see it here again, if you find damage to the coil, what I will do is a bridge so that the board continues to work. And if you find damage to the capacitor, what I will do is remove it and test the board without the capacitor. And before delivering to the customer, of course, look for a replacement, look for a similar coil with similar characteristics and also look for a capacitor with similar characteristics. Everything is printed on the board. In the case of capacitors, you need to look for their capacitance value and their value in farads. In the case of coils, you can look for a similar one that has the same wire diameter. This is important because the electric current that will flow through the coil depends on the wire diameter. The value of the capacitors is printed on the capacitor. In this case, we are seeing a 0 0.22 microfarad capacitor and 275 volts of alternating current. So you can look for a replacement. In the case of coils, you should look for a coil. With physically similar characteristics, you cannot put this coil in place of this one because it is in the circuit and supports much more electric current or electron flow due to the thickness it has. So you should pay attention to that detail. You should place a similar coil when you make a replacement, but to test, you can. 
Remove it directly. We will continue to talk about coils and capacitors a little later when we go much deeper into inverter technology, but until this moment we have a fairly general overview of everything that is a conventional source.